Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, Gary Green's on Fox Patrol with the Merkel Helix, plus Tim Pilbeam reviews the Sarko A7 Rooftech. Gary Green's New Year's resolution is a simple one, to spend more time in his fox box, and he's kicking off the year how he means to go on, with a nighttime vigil from his lofty shooting platform. Right, so we've, we've returned to the fox box again, um, just purely just to keep up with the uh, control of these foxes, it's just ongoing, uh, never ending really. But um, the actual situation here now, the turkeys are all gone, so they're all ready for Christmas, and there's plenty of free-range chickens still here, though, so we need to keep on that. And the farmer's assured me that he's seen quite a few foxes because they've been drawing the turkeys. There's a lot of feather out there. So uh, we're just trying to keep the numbers down as usual. I think we're up to about 69, I think, for this year, a little bit low. Not been here quite as much as I would have liked. Um, normally around 100 on average. But no, it's just a never ending job. Um, fortunately, with this box, makes it a lot more comfortable. So I've been keeping the bait topped up regularly. It never ceases to amaze me, really, and how many foxes still pull in here. Before arriving at the fox box, we came across the sorry sight of a dead monk jack, which had succumbed to an unlucky entanglement in the fence line. But Gary is determined to make the most of this unfortunate occurrence. We managed to pick up a monk jack that was caught in a fence on the way in, which is quite useful for pegging out. I got a call from a friend, literally as we was ready to come up, to say there was a monk jack caught up in the stock fencing. So when I picked that up on the way through, it's you know, a good size animal really for pegging down. Don't want anything too big out there for you know, obvious reason for public and stuff. Don't want to upset anybody. But no, it's quite useful. I think that will pre prove useful this evening. I had a look at the bait that I left previous um, about five days ago, which was a young pricket RTA, and that's pretty well chewed up. Um, which told me in that amount of time must be a lot of foxes coming through here, which the farmer did say there was. But uh, yeah, I think um, which should be a, you know quite an eventful evening. I think. I've got company today, a friend of mine, Bob. So it's, uh, it's nice to have a bit of company as well. You know, it uh, can be a long old time up here. Well, it's been a, I think it's going to be a long evening this evening. It wasn't long. For uh, we saw some movement out there. First fox that came in came in quite confidently. Held back a little bit to start, like they normally do, but come in and it was moving around quite a lot, about 80, 90 yards. Gary readies the Merkel Helix for its first shot of the night. But sadly, it's not to be. I wanted to stand it up, so I'd just give it a little squeak. It just took off and just left the, left the place completely. Didn't even look back, so uh, maybe someone's had a play with that one before, certainly not me, um, and maybe not necessarily even here, so that one was away. It's a shame we can't get the night off to a successful start, but there'll be more where that one came from, and Gary can console himself with the last of this year's mince pies. Home from home, innit? Kept on, innit? 
Mm. Wrong fingers, Bob. <laughs> but I can't see. <laughs> Desperate. Uh, it wasn't long though before we had others moving around. There was two foxes coming through the gateway. That's not a safe shot back there, so we let them come on. I wanted to take the longer one first, but it wouldn't come in enough, so. With one of the pair out of the equation, Gary is left waiting for the closer fox to present a safe shot. Luckily, this one follows the script. Ended up taking one quite close, probably about 50 yards, I would have said. Drop that on the spot and the other one just took off through the edge, not to be seen again. So far the score is, scene three, shot one. We reckon there's more to come yet. Went on for quite a while after that, I think two hours, two and a half hours before we saw another fox and that one was fleeting, that was straight through, didn't really want to stop, tried to squeak it, hold it up to get a shot, that didn't want to know. It's a fox all right, but it's not the only wildlife in range. With a badger complicating matters, this fox is best left for another night. Then sat on again, I think another hour went by, so we're, we're pushing on now, you know. Then the next one came in quite confidently, uh, and I had a good clear shot, what I assumed was okay, took the shot. <whistles> had a big impact, but the fox took off um, 50, 60 yards and then fell over. That just that wasn't quite how I'd like to shoot them, but that, that's how that one went. And then we waited on quite some time after it sat on for, I don't know, three, maybe four hours. We had a little flurry of the foxes, but the first one was jumping, wasn't it? Mm. Mm. Oh, there you go. Any sugar? No, thank you. You're for that. No. I couldn't take any more complaints. <laughs> And then another one come on, that was quite confident, straight in. Gary has to hastily swap T-Mug for rifle as what might be fox number three heads into the bait. We watch on and wait for it to turn broadside. Eventually, Gary takes matters into his own hands with a decisive squeak that allows for another well-delivered shot from the Merkel Helix.
Shot. Dropped that one right on the spot at about 90 yards. That was a nice clean kill, that one. So that was our third one. Um, but I think we've seen about 80 of the season, which is quite surprising, really. I'd be interested to see particularly the, the second one, the one that I hit real big thump on it. Um, I would be interested to see the impact on that fox, but I'm sure that's stone dead now. I can't believe that ran 50 yards. And that was, that was the first one, that was the Vixen. And that was shot high because that was in long grass as well. And you can see it still touched the grass on the way you're through. Very old Vixen. Got top canine missing there. And then that was the last one, another dog. That's a younger animal. Good weight though. Oh, heavy. Yeah, big old brushes on them. I'll leave them in the <coughs> usual place <coughs> for the farmer to um, have a look at in the morning. But, uh, the free range chickens will be out again in the morning, so it's, it's, always, it's always a worry. But you can only do what you can do. Yeah, I think we've done a reasonable job considering. Gary there, securing his Vulpine trio. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Gun shops in Great Britain have had a reprieve on electronic gun registers, barely a week before new requirements were set to come into effect. The EU Firearms Directive requires that electronic records of all gun sales are kept, starting from the 31st of December. But the Home Office made a last-minute decision that these records could be kept on police computer systems and not by individual dealers. Basque praised the decision as both pragmatic and correct. The new general licences have come into effect, and shooting organisations have urged all pest controllers to read up and make sure they abide by the rules. There are no major changes to the licence conditions in England, but the licence has been made clearer and the explanatory notes have been rewritten. In Scotland, there's a new amendment that allows SNH to revoke general licence rights where there is evidence to suggest wild bird crime has taken place. Basque has raised concerns that this could allow innocent land managers to be unfairly penalised. The long build-up to the shooting events at the 2016 Olympics in Rio has begun. British Shooting and the BICTSF published the shotgun selection procedure for international events in 2015. Selection for the first three World Cups will be determined from the 2014 ranking system. Qualification for later events will be determined by the results of three selection shoots in each Olympic discipline. The first selection shoot is for Skeet and is scheduled for the 11th and 12th of April at Bisley. Read all about it in Clay Shooting magazine. The government is putting its weight behind the culling of grey squirrels. It's making funding available for landowners to cull greys on their land in the first national scheme for managing squirrel numbers. There'll also be money available for neighbouring landowners to cooperate so they can effectively cull squirrels together. Greys cause an estimated £10 million worth of damage to British woodlands every year. And finally, Basque's membership has swelled to a new all-time high. The UK's largest shooting organisation now boasts more than 140,000 members. The organisation said it was delighted to reach this milestone ahead of what is set to be a challenging year for shooting. Chief Executive Richard Alley said Basque is committed to providing an effective voice for shooting and with every new member who joins us, that voice is growing stronger. That was the Shooting Show News. The Seiko A7 came out a couple of years ago. And it sits between the, the Tika T3 and also the, the Seiko 85 market. And it fills that middle ground. And I'd be very interested to see how well it sells. But they brought out a new, new model called the Seiko A7 Rough Tech. And here it is. Uh, the Rough Tech uh, basically is uh, the A7 stainless, longer barrel, and a hard composite stock. Very much aimed at uh, the person who wants an accurate rifle. There's two models of the Rough Tech. We've got the Rough Tech Pro and the Rough Tech Range. This is the Pro. The Range is very much aimed at the more of a target shooter. Uh, the Range has got a longer 
a pistol grip. It's got a wider fore end and a bigger and longer barrel. But we're staying with the, the Pro. Very much aimed at the maybe the Fox Shooter, uh, Varminter, uh, and hopefully it looks like a very, very accurate rifle. Let's start with the stock. Hard composite stock. Comes in uh, tan or this dark grey colour. Spider's web. It's actually got, it's quite grippable actually. It's an unusual texture. Uh, pretty, if you uh, know your stocks, a bit of Bell and Carson perhaps. It's actually quite grippy uh, and it feels really, really good. Nice, uh, quite a long pistol grip here. Uh, quite a thick recoil pad. I do for those uh, heavier cal calibers. Got a uh, bipod uh, QD stud in the front there. And uh, it's quite, a, quite nice, looks very, very smart. What is unusual about this stock is it's actually got an aluminium chassis. There's an aluminium chassis running the full length here and the action is bedded straight onto the aluminium chassis. So hopefully that's going to really, really make it a very, very accurate rifle. Uh, one thing I just noticed on the front here, just a minor thing, is that despite having an aluminium chassis, it's quite flexible on the front. Just an observation, but uh, I don't suppose that would make any difference to the accuracy because it's not actually touching the, uh, the barrel itself. With regards to the stainless steel action, nothing's changed from the standard A7 here. One piece bolt, very, very smooth, absolutely superb. Got the uh, plastic shroud on the back, uh, three lugged on the front, three position safety catch. And if it's on safety, you actually can press that little catch on the front there, which releases the bolt, and so you can take your round out. Absolutely superb, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, it's got the uh, two weaver style bases on the top of the action there, which it's much easier for you if you want to use a different type of mount to the, uh, the Seiko Optilox but a lot more versatile. Uh, moving on to the stainless steel barrel, fully fluted, um, medium weight, uh, sporting weight rifle, uh, 24 and a half inches long, so it's quite a long barrel. And uh, if you, by the time you put a moderator on it, you know, that's getting out there for 28, 29 inches. Okay. Um, for this review, I've uh, got an ATEC Carbon O2, one of the new um, carbon moderators by Jackson Rifles. Very light, 300 odd grams. It uh, looks uh, absolutely fabulous. So it'd be interesting to see how that uh, performs on test. And uh, regards to the, uh, the magazine, plastic magazine, to release the magazine, you've got to press the magazine upwards, then press the actual magazine release uh, and out it pops. Uh, plastic magazine with little metal guides on the top. Um, very, very similar to that of the Tika and it's got a plastic uh, trigger guard and surround, uh, whereas the, obviously the Seiko 85 is very much all made of steel or alloy. So, as for the optics today, we've got, uh, from GMK, we've got uh, the Burris uh, 3 to 12 by 50, the 4X, uh, very popular scope. Be very interesting how this performs today. Mounted on some OptiLock uh, mounts, which are on the Weaver bases. So, an interesting concept. Um, I love the stock. It feels very rough, hard wearing, durable. So, I want to say this actually make a really good fox shooting rifle. I'm going to be very intrigued to see how accurate it is because of the aluminium chassis running through it to so make it nice and rigid. The way the action's bolted through to that aluminium action. So, I think it's time for us to test the, uh, the rough tech out. All right. Shooting. Okay, we just done some accuracy shooting here using three different types of ammunition. But before I move on to the, the results, how did the rifle shoot? Uh, Seiko trigger, uh, about two and three quarter pounds pull, 
very crisp, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, felt very, very comfortable using that. Uh, the stock, yeah, it's it's nice, nice pistol grip. Uh, quite a nice palm swell for, for, for my hand. Feels very comfortable, very, very grippy as well. Uh, even when it's, I got it wet uh, a few days ago and it feels very grippy. This feels very, very comfortable. Uh, action as ever, lovely, no problem at all. Uh, the, uh, the moderator, the Carbon O2 mod moderator, yeah, it's uh, 28 to 32 decibels, reduction in noise. It seems to be kind of performing very, very well. Very, very light, which is the most important thing. And uh, 100 meter shooting here. The, the scope looks nice and bright. And we've got a, a dot as a illuminated reticle. So uh, so far, it actually feels superb, like an A A7 would do. Now, how do we get on? We've got three bullets here. We've got a Seiko uh, 70 grain. But it's interesting, they actually are, they've got the nozzle ballistic uh, tips on them. So they come at about 3,300 feet per second. Uh, well, it's pre 0.5, but we are talking, you know, there's nothing much wrong with that. So under 0.6 of an inch, very, very impressive. I've got uh, the Seiko, this is a game head, 100 uh, grain, around about 3,000 feet per second. Once again, 0.7 of an inch. That's very, very, very respectable. And last but not no least, we've got a Federal here. It's uh, 80 grain soft point. Uh, going out around about 3132, I imagine, 0.8 of an inch. So, that is very, very, very good. I'm really impressed. So, we need to know why this, uh, this rifle is shooting so well. So, perhaps we best take it apart very quickly and show you why it is performing so well. But that is very, very good. I've taken the, uh, the action out of the uh, stock. Now, I'll talk about the aluminium chassis which runs the full length of the stock. And you actually can see where the, uh, the actual action screws actually screw straight into the aluminium here. So it's obviously pretty, pretty solid, very, very rigid. And also it's got a, a solid recoil stop, which uh, sits in the bottom of the action. So it's all pretty well kind of squashed and tightened together. So I imagine that's why it's actually uh, shooting so well. But uh, I've yet to find Tika or Seiko to not shoot well, but most things are under three quarters of a minute here, which is uh, which is great for a uh, production rifle. So there's no nothing faulting the accuracy of the A7 Rough Tech. Oh yeah! Now we're farming. So, so what do I think? Let's look at the rifle. Rifle retails around about £1,500. I suspect you get a wee bit cheaper in the shops. So with that, you get a very, very uh, rigid stock, hard stock, uh, hard wearing stock. You get a longer barrel uh, as well. So, um, you know, I think you get a good value for money compared to the, the standard A A7. Um, the moderator, £425, quite expensive for moderator nowadays. It's light. It's very, very effective. The actual moderation, the, the way it muffles the sound is very, very effective. That's from Jackson uh, Rifles. Um, I think we've seen a lot more of uh, the, uh, the carbon rifles, uh, sorry, the carbon moderators in the future. And uh, as for the Barriscope, yep, uh, a great bit of kit. But all around, a very, very good uh, uh, piece of kit. Uh, very, very capable fox shooter and also obviously a deer stalking rifle. So um, it's been a, a very, very, Good test actually, so yeah, been a good day. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.